Slaying Sunnah, Abu Ishaq al-Shatibi's concept of bid'ah in his I'tisam, McGill University, 1999, Montreal, Canada, Asif Saifuddin Jahar. Chapter 2. Ashatabi was particularly insistent in his position that bid'ah is prohibited because it prevents practices it invents practices not attested to in the Sharia. This is shown in his rejection of those who try to classify bid'ah according to the five values normally assigned to Shari rulings Wajib, Haram, Makruh, Mandub, Mubah. Wajib is obligatory, haram is prohibited, makru reprehensible, mandub recommended, mubah permissible. This had first been attempted by Izzi bin Abdul Salam, who died in 660, commensurate with 1261, and Shihab al Din al Karafi, who died in 684 1285, who sought to establish this approach as a permanent feature of fiqh. Shatibi, however, states that Karafi was wrong to adopt this position. For in doing so, he was treating bid'ah as though it was part of the legal values. Shatibi would only acknowledge that bid'ah can be defined as reprehensible or forbidden. The other categories represent a contradiction in terms. And here the footnote again. This thesis has a lot of good footnotes. Shatibi maintains that there are four qualifications in which bid'ah saghira can turn into bid'ah kabira. First is the persistence in its performance. Second is encouraging others to practice it. Third is practice of bid'ah in public places. And fourth is discrediting its violence. For Shatabi, any attempt to link bid'ah to the values of Sharia is an invented action, which is, a, which is in and of itself nothing less than bid'ah, therefore unlawful. Furthermore, he states that Karafi was wrong to attribute these notions to his master, Izz ibn Abdul Salam, since according to him, the latter had rejected a maslaha mursala, public interest, as a form of bid'ah. And again, a footnote. Uh, this is Izz ibn Abdul Salam. Izz ibn Abdul Salam defines bid'ah as an activity not attested to in the time of the Prophet. He then justifies the division as follows. First, bid'ah wajiba, obligatory innovation, is substantiated in the creation of Arabic grammar to understand the words of God. Second, bid'ah muharrama, prohibited innovation, is identified with the creation of the Qadariya and Jabariya schools. These are schools of law uh, related to the acceptance or the overemphasis and rejection of pre-decree, which is Qadr. Third, Bida Makruha, reprehensible innovation, is exemplified as any attempt to decorate a mosque or the Qur'an. Fourth, Bida Mubaha, permissible innovation, is typified by the practice of shaking hands after Subh and Asr prayers. Finally, Bida Manduba, recommended innovation, is seen as the construction of bridges and schools, etc. This is found in his book, Qawaid al-Ahkam fi Masalih al Masalih al-Anam, two volumes uh, published in Cairo. The division of bid'ah according to the legal values of Islamic jurisprudence is also attempted by Turkum, Turkumani, who died in 1397. He contends that bid'ah can be counted as permissible, mubah, representable, reprehensible, makruh, or prohibited haram. Furthermore, he maintains that bid'ah can be categorized as bad or good. Examples of the latter, according to him, include celebrating the anniversary of the Prophet's birth or building schools for social or educational purposes. Any attempt, however, to subsume bid'ah under such qualification is misleading, according to Shatabi, for to characterize bid'ah as amalgamated selection, tahayyur, or obligation, wajib, contradicts the universal nature of its erroneousness, and besides, creates new innovations in and of itself. On the basis of this general criticism of bid'ah, Shatabi develops for it a two-tiered classification, bid'ah hakikiya and bid'ah idafiya, real bid'ah and relative bid'ah. Apologies, no Arabic given. Regarding matters of worship, Shatabi contends that the unlawfulness of innovation in this area is recognized by the ulama, whether in questions of faith or merely in practical matters. On the other hand, the ulama disagreed over the issue of customs. This, according to Shatibi, was due to the ambiguity resulting from confusion of the customs that existed in the time of the Prophet with his real worship. Before Shatibi explains how innovation in worship and customs can or cannot be counted as bid'ah, he reaffirms the principles of Sharia and especially the legal epistemological uh, principles of worship, custom. 
Worship, he says, pertains to matters whose prohibition or command is rationally not understood, such as salah, uh, praying, fasting, and pilgrimage. Custom, on the other hand, can be understood to donate public interest, manfa'ah, and its harm, mafsada, and the like, including traditions of sale, marriage, and crime. Addressing the issue of bid'ah in customs, Shatavi cites the introduction of customary practices into those of worship and vice versa. For him, the two are interchangeable when performed in obedience to God. In certain customs, if certain customs are to be counted at worship, like those involved in marriage, then any innovation in such case, according to Shatavi, is unlawful. Marriage, for instance, uh, the Sharia requires that a dowah be paid as a symbol of a religious contract having been agreed. The festivals associated with the practices of a marriage, on the other hand, which are not considered sacred transactions, such as ijab and kabul, fall under custom. In this instance, the shari construction is fixed and never changes. Customs, on the other hand, do change and can differ from those observed in the time of the Prophet. Thus, Shatabi classifies bid'ah in two aspects. First, real bid'ah, and second, um, real bid'ah being contradictory and clear violation of the shari'ah, and second, relative bid'ah which is ambiguous and may either be counted as bid'ah or not. It is not the latter that Shatibi discusses extensively and develops into a brilliant rapprochement of legal philosophy. Stay tuned for bid'ah and many more parts.